It's DTS 223, our second to last show ever. Festival of the Lost Returns, a new Iron Banner, crazy Last Wish speedrun times, and more. You're listening to Destiny The Show. What is good, everybody, and welcome to the Destiny the Show podcast. I am BBK Dragoon. I am joined, as always, by my great co-host, Diddy Dude. How was your week? What'd you do? Uh, you know, my week this week started out super awful, but last week was pretty nice. The weekend was really relaxing, and today it's been rainy. It is 45 degrees. Can you believe it? Oh my gosh, you got some of our weather. It was just like, I stepped outside to take the dogs to the bathroom this morning, and it was, oh my gosh, I should have put a jacket on. It is freezing. <laughs> and of course, the uh, the rain didn't help either. I told you it snowed a bunch. I don't know if I complained about it last week on the show, but it snowed a bunch here this last week, mm -hmm. and that is very early for us. And I actually got on the mountain bike on a nice trail ride today, but like, you can check out my Instagram and you can see it. There's snow all on the mountains surrounding us and it is stupidly cold, dude. I have like this big face wrap on. I look like the <laughs> driving Miss Daisy person with this nice. little bonnet on my face. So yeah, overall, man, it's uh, been pretty good. Now you said it started terribly. Are you talking about your work thing? Yeah, so anyone out there who deals with uh, QuickBooks or like Intuit support is garbage. Like there is, <laughs> there has been no phone call I've had with Intuit support that lasted less than 90 minutes long and there's still no resolution. It, they're just garbage. I would rather, man, Bungie could put in the Destiny 1 exotic sword quest grind for materials on Mercury and I would rather do that than deal with Intu Intuit support. <laughs> like there is no scenario in which I want to call them because I know it's going to take up my entire afternoon. They're, they're garbage. Absolutely. So are you awful. saying we're never going to get a sponsorship, even though this is the second to last show? There's no chance after that trash talk. There is it, huh? no there is no amount of money <laughs> that they could pay me to sponsor their products. Any of them. Like, oh, it's man. Absolutely garbage. If anyone works in the Intuit backend team, send, send me a message because I, I need someone who knows what they're talking about, please. <laughs> I will. What are the odds? Next week, problem <laughs> resolved. It's just magically fixed. He turns out he loves DTS. Never knew it. Oh man. oh, man. So this last week, Black Ops 4 came out. I've been playing a handful of that. We have this week at Bungie to talk about today. Iron Banner returning, Double Valor, Triple Valor, uh, Festival of the Lost is live this week. We are going to talk about that as much as we can. By the way, we record on Monday evenings, and we finally got the benefit of like a trailer on Monday that helps the show. Nice. Usually, Bungie like <laughs> screws with us. We used to record on Sundays, and new trailers would come out on Monday. So, if we get anything wrong, and you guys are playing Festival of the Lost while listening, hey, it's because we just don't we don't see the future, but we sometimes predict it. Isn't that right, Diddy? Well, yeah, we're just kind of like the Vex. We're trying to run simulations. Speaking of simulations, we'll be diving into the Infinite Forest this week throughout Festival of the Lost, and we're going to conclude today's show talking about the price change that basically includes the Destiny 2 expansion pass with any purchase of Forsaken starting October 16th. So if you're thinking about buying Curse of Osiris or Warmind, don't wait until the 16th because it's going to be free with Forsaken. So let's get into the news. This is a point where I'd small talk about Black Ops 4 being really fun. It's really fun. Okay, let's talk about the TWAB. Nice. This <laughs> week at Bungie. Festival of the Lost is here from October 16th to November 6th. Diddy. Can you believe that November is almost here? Uh, no, I can't. <laughs> Time's flying, dude. And the next it couple has. of weeks are going to really be really, has. really busy. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing they mentioned is Iron Banner is coming back. It's going to be starting... On the 16th, and it's going to be ending on the 23rd. I do want to note, this time around, it looks like a scout rifle and a sniper rifle for you to go after. But, remember, this time those bounties, those weekly bounties, all of them are powerful rewards. And many of them have been made a lot easier. So, uh, this is your catch-up mechanic, right? Diddy? Yeah. This is the time to play if you are behind. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, myself included. <laughs> I, I love that they've 
is it a nerf or a buff to the bounties? I think it's a buff to the bounties because they made them easier to complete. And I also much love easier. I also love that they're powerful rewards. Plus, the gear actually looks really awesome. I love. I was like, when I scrolled down the top, I was like, what is that? I need that in my life. So I'm really happy about that. On top of Iron Banner this week is also double and triple valor. So Tuesday through Friday, that's the 16th through the 19th, you're going to have a double valor active. And then for the weekend, that's the 19th through the 23rd, you're going to have triple valor available. So that is actually super amazing. Have you ever seen the movie Air Bud, Diddy, with the Golden yes. Retriever? I've seen multiple uh, of all the sequels, pretty much. <laughs> now, this is a scene that's come from a lot of movies. I could be wrong. Maybe it's not an Air Bud. But you know at the end where it's like the clown and the kid are like trying to coax the dog over to it. And whatever way the dog chooses, it's like that's going to be the dog's owner. Does that sound like Air Bud or a totally different movie? I can't remember. Whatever. Honest. Pretend. Okay. There's two guys, <laughs> dog in the middle. And they're both like, come here, come here, holding out like a bone. This is Destiny's version to get the Black Ops players to come back and play PvP this week. Because not yeah. only is it Iron Banner, <laughs> it's a double Valor week into a triple Valor weekend. Overkill. What are you going to do? That's a wrong game, man. Uh, I'll probably play Breath of the Wild instead. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, I I think I'm actually I'm going to take advantage of this this week. Uh, PvP, just not my style. But, I mean, with all these incentives, I, I might be coaxed into it. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going <clears> to <throat> choke on myself first, and uh, then I'm going to talk about this. A <laughs> uh, little bit of both. I'll wait for the Triple Valor weekend. I, overall, I love that they do this. Iron Banner, you guys, is your catch-up mechanic for the most part. That's what it served a lot of purposes for in D1. And it, 6v6, I enjoy 6v6 PvP, so I'll probably be playing That's some true. matches with you it's as well. It's going to be a little bit better, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know what they did for Festival of the Lost this time around that they've done in previous years, Diddy? They're bringing back the paper craft masks. What are these all about? So basically, it's literal physical paper craft in real life. You get to print out uh, some type of mask. This one's a chicken that they have in the job. And it's, you just print it out, and you fold it over, and you have a mask to wear. Good story, bro. Now, these are complicated, though. Like, if you're going to do these, these are multiple page PDFs you print out, you cut meticulously, you fold meticulously, and then you somehow glue it together? Or do you tape it together? I got to go with the glue, man. But yeah. I guess tape would work as well. So we have the Colonel. So you have a chicken mask, Scorn, Lord Shax, and Aldrin Sov, and it is the screaming Aldrin Sov mask. I was so happy to see this <laughs> make a return, like... Long-time Destiny players have to get some sense of nostalgia out of this, right? Yeah. If you see anyone on Halloween, like, at your door trick-or-treating with one of these masks on, let us know, because that's going to be super fun to see. Buy that guy a beer, you know? I mean, it's probably going to get... be a little kid, so maybe well, don't, a soda. Don't buy a kid a beer. You, you don't <laughs> do... That would be bad. Don't do that. But if it's, like, an adult, then give yeah. Them, give them a box of raisins in true Eris Mord fashion. <laughs> Uh, old school listeners will definitely get that. All right, uh, let's talk about Festival of the Lost. It's happening this week, and we talked a bit about it last time. However, this Festival of the Lost brings with it a lot of the decorations that you would expect for a spooky festival. And it looks like we're going to try and solve the mystery of Master Ives, right? Ives? <laughs> Ives? Ives. Uh, you know, so Master Ives was the Crypt Dark in the Reef for House of Wolves and Destiny 1. Um, and he was the same voice actor as Devram K. So uh, I guess they had to kill him off. But uh, starting on October 30th, we'll be able to partake in an actual new quest line to figure out who killed Master Ives. So that's pretty neat. They kind of give you a reason. I like that. They're not completely deleting him from the ethos of Destiny. Mm -hmm. Along with this quest that's going to be here this week, there's new bounties. Those bounties are going to be useful in order for you to go after the new items that are with this event. Those bounties award fragmented souls. You can use the fragmented souls to purchase masks as well as the horror story legendary auto rifle. It's the origin story from what the body looks like. Comes masterworked and at 600 power, I believe, if that's what the little one minute, that's what the one minute trailer showed, didn't it, Diddy? I think so, yeah. Yep. Beyond that, we're going to be going back into the Infinite Forest. What are we doing there? Well, first of all, it's called the Haunted Forest this time oh, around. Excuse me. Excuse um, me. So for a limited time, of course, for the duration of the event, 
I'll quote here from the article, Guardians have been tasked with clearing out its ghouls and demons, which are spooking up a storm. You have 15 minutes to dive as deep as you can into the haunted forest and clear out the nightmares lying in wait. Be wary, the deeper you go, the more difficult your job will become. So uh, Bungie stole our idea from DTS about the wild and they made it a timed event. No, just kidding. Um, essentially, this is kind of what we wanted, to be honest. It's a PvE activity. Go as far as you want in the Infinite Forest for 15 minutes after 15 minutes, which you can do solo or matchmake, of course, um, or with the pre-made fire team, and just play through it until the time runs out. And, of course, the farther you get, the more difficult it becomes. Hopefully, the better the rewards as well. That'd be pretty neat. Maybe you'll get two tokens in a blue. Oh, man, I really hope so. Yeah. I think this is cool. I mean, this is a whole lot better than just uh, trials without radar and some extra sound effects. You know what I mean? <laughs> and some uh, random spooky stuff that jumps on your screen in the middle of a trials match. Yeah, that's that sounds like something I would just love to read. I'm not going to trash talk it because apparently there were a lot of people who like spooky trials. Oh, my gosh. I was not one of those people. I think this does uh, come full circle in in the sense of we have asked for PVE events to go alongside of these holiday specials for a long time. This is cool. I'm sure it's probably going to be kind of, well, I don't know, maybe it's not going to be average. Maybe it'll be like amazing, but I'm betting this yeah. will be just sort of a fun little oh, a novelty. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, the way I picture it, it's not going to be identical to like the, the Whisper of the Worm, right? But I, I kind of uh, relate it to that in that it's a most likely going to be a difficult activity at least once you get farther in and there's a nice reward at the end hopefully i do like how however that they're reusing the infinite forest because let's be honest the infinite forest has huge potential and they're actually doing something with it they're not just letting it sit uh, they're also upping the visuals as well with some of the screenshots that we've seen it's darker it's not this really happy infinite forest a um, little darker and haunted i guess you could say so you know, in this instance, if they pull it off correctly, I think this is a good uh, reuse reuse of the assets. Props. Yeah, props thrown over to them. Mm -hmm. Overall, um, I'm excited to try out Festival of the Lost. When I hop on, it'll be a nice little bonus. And then I guess the Dawning is our next event, and that's coming during the season of the Forge, right? Yeah, with the Black Armory update. Which we're probably not very far from hearing information about Black Armory. Uh, yeah. I think some stuff actually did leak. I'm not positive on it, but I think Icebreaker, uh, Last, Last Word, Word, and Thunderlord, right? I think so, yeah. I didn't watch the video, so maybe that's just pure speculation, but I think they wouldn't bring Icebreaker back in the way that it was. It'd be like no. the nerfed Icebreaker, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, it would be something weird, but they don't have a lot of the ammo difficulties in other, I don't know. It's changed. The whole thing's changed. Anyway, I just rabbit trailed us. Let's talk about the price change because that's indicated in uh, this week at Bungie. So first of all, what is happening? I did a video on this Saturday, Diddy, after you sent me a link to this. Right alongside the launch of Black Ops 4 last Thursday-ish Friday, Bungie dropped the news that you no longer are going to, well, okay. Forsaken is going to include the Destiny 2 expansion pass for free starting October 16th. The Destiny 2 expansion pass, you guys, is Curse of Osiris and Warmind. It is not the Destiny 2 annual pass, <laughs> which is the three upcoming content drop thingies that are happening throughout the next year. It is Curse of Osiris and Warmind. This is important because in order for you to play Forsaken, most of you guys know this, I know, but on the, the video there was a lot of confusion <laughs> Uh, in order to play Forsaken, you needed Vanilla Destiny 2, Curse of Osiris, and Warmind. That was how the Taken King functioned as well. You needed Dark Below and House of Wolves alongside of the base game of Destiny 1. Now, if you didn't have all that stuff, the Legendary Edition existed so that you could get all three of those things plus Forsaken at the $60 price tag. Starting October 16th, Forsaken includes Curse of Osiris and Warmind. Why this may have, or why it probably still could cost some salt, is we're a little over a month after the release of Forsaken, and I know many players who did not want to buy Curse of Osiris or Warmind, but wanted to experience Forsaken. And you're somewhat strong-armed into 
having to have that content. It might be tough for Bungie to disseminate who has it and who doesn't from a director perspective, an activity perspective, like, oh, the Flashpoint's on Mercury this week. Well, this is why you need to have it if you're going to be doing Mm -hmm, these things. Did I explain it okay, Diddy? Yeah, I think so. All right. Uh, What are they doing for veterans um, in the TWAB? They noted a few items that they're going to give people who already own Forsaken plus all this stuff. Yeah, so essentially they're doing a veterans bundle. Uh, yeah. In-game items, you're getting a unique emblem, a unique shader, two exotic emotes, and a consumables bundle of fire team medallions, vet- uh, vanguard and crucible boons, and uh, finest master uh, matter weaves. Okay, and the shader, tiger stripe shader, is pretty much the same thing the veteran reward was for the Taken King, if you guys remember mm-hmm. last year. I love that shader. Really cool. Um I, I don't know. I'll just say the, the good side of it is this is what it should have been from the beginning. It's more streamlined. It makes sense. And if you read in the TWAB here, I'll, I'll, I'll quote from what Bungie had to say here. With the first month of Forsaken behind us, we're taking stock of what we've learned. Some of those learnings will manifest in-game updates that we're deploying in the very near future, but not every improvement can be made with code changes. We also want to make it less complicated for other Guardians to begin their journey in Forsaken. So essentially, they acknowledge it as... Um, Oh, here, launching a game reveals what we did right and where we could have done better. Sorry, that was the literally key sentence I needed to read. They acknowledged that it was confusing and maybe they saw not the level of engagement or purchases they wanted with Forsaken, maybe attributing that to tying Curse of Osiris and Warmind to it. Uh, This just is an Activision thing, Diddy. I'm not excited about it. I feel disappointed for a lot of people where they go, hey, I feel like I just lost 20 bucks for content I'm not really going to experience, and it's only been about five or six weeks. The other side of the coin, great. This is the move that it should have been from the beginning, but what do you think? You know, it's really difficult because there's not much we can do to combat these types of changes other than speaking with our wallet, right? And, you know, for those of us who actually buy into this new content right as soon as it drops it's almost like we're hurt Uh, the the veteran rewards that they're offering they're great for people who still play destiny but i mean if if forsaken didn't grab your interest in the first couple weeks and you don't play it anymore but then you also had to buy the expansion pass to play forsaken you're just essentially wasted all this money um now it just it's becoming very uh, very clear and very apparent that Activision's prices harm early adopters financially. It's We are a year after Destiny 2's launch, and it's already dropped in price drastically in comparison to when, if you wanted to play this content when it came out, you had to pay almost double the price. That's an issue for me. That's a really big issue for me because now... Obviously, this happened in Destiny 1 a few times. Now that it's happening in Destiny 2, nothing is going to change. Uh, we see this a lot with Activision products as well. Uh, now, Black Ops 2 does something different that I guess you could speak to, but uh, it just seems like um, I probably don't want to purchase another Activision product product after this because I, I, just, I just need to know I'm going to wait a year, it's going to be half price, and then it'll be mostly worth my money at that point. Yeah, I think you mean Black Ops 4. I think you said Black Ops 2. But um, I'll, uh, what, I'll, whatever, I think that's whatever a separate... century I'm living in. in... <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think that's a separate subject, and maybe I'll touch on it in a second. But more so, I want to. I just want to hit on a few things. The Legendary Edition of Forsaken, uh, I think that's what they called it. I'll, I'll, if I'm operating off the wrong name, I apologize. The $60 version of Forsaken that includes Vanilla Curse of Osiris and Warmind. Are you going to see that being... I, I mean, imagine the average consumer, right? They own... The vanilla destiny 2 they don't need to buy that 60 dollars version they just need forsaken at this point are the game stops going to be pulling the legendary editions from the shelves are the mm-hmm. the people going to be explaining in detail hey do you have this little check mark you almost need a flow chart at this point to stay up to date with what you do and you don't need and i just think it's a shame because forsaken is excellent content and destiny is back on form with forsaken however year four and a half and we still have these awkward pricing systems and yeah. confusing models that shouldn't exist you've got a good product and to me diddy i think it's just a way to incentivize further sales and it's only cool. a month it's how a company forsaken works. dropped right only a month that they made this change so i mean 
for those of you who waited this long, Forsaken is a great uh, option. And if you stopped after Destiny 2 Vanilla and you don't have the expansion pass, I would probably say, yeah, maybe this is right for you because Forsaken has made leaps and bounds improvements over Destiny 2 Vanilla. And it's got a lot of great content moving forward. But, you know, that's that's for you to decide, really. Yeah. Uh, Black Ops Season Pass is $50, includes zombie support and new multiplayer maps. Obviously fairly pricey if you're getting into a $60 game. I think if you bought it with the game it's like a 40 dollar deal but it's just activision has an old school AAA pricing model and they're a company they're a publicly traded yeah. company that's always in the public spotlight especially the financial press spotlight and so they are going to generate revenue i would imagine these decisions come from a combination of bungie and activision i, I don't really want to belabor the point like this is what happens in destiny it's a shame that this stuff happens in destiny it seems year after year because like we said, we've finally gotten to really good content. You don't need negative press or or stories like these of confusion in my yeah. sense. And when I did the video, did he, it was crazy how many people came out of the woodwork to kick and scream saying, if you don't like it, don't play the game. And I, I just wanted to phrase like, dude, you can be constructively critical and offer constructive criticism and still enjoy a game and still play the game. I really like Forsaken. Yeah. But I absolutely will talk out about things like these because it's like, hey, you guys have a really good product and it's not being received as well as it possibly could be when you pull a move where five weeks after it feels like a $20 purchase was invalidated. Oh, but I got a shader, Diddy, and a couple of emotes. So there yeah, you, you go. can use in game. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Totally. And, and uh, we're in this day and age, right, where um, the annual price point for games Obviously, a game comes out sixty dollars. That's standard price, you know, pretty much across the board. It's changed in the last couple of years in that that includes maybe three months of content, and then three months later, uh, you're getting new content drop at another price point. Where you mentioned the Black Ops um, price point of fifty dollars on top of sixty dollars, is that the price point for standard Black mm -hmm. Ops Four? Yeah, that's one hundred and ten dollars to play Black Ops Four for a year. That's yeah. It's we're in that era, right? That they are, you know, essentially increasing the price of games for on a yearly basis. It's it's changed, man. It's but changed. the level of support of games have changed dramatically too. You know, if you True, think about yeah, five, like six Halo years 3, ago, Halo Three, right? You had the one title update a year and a half or two years after it came out, and then that's it, right? Some map packs, yeah. But it's different now. We have living, breathing ecosystems. Mm -hmm. These guys. Yep. The games as a service model is designed to keep you involved in that play space. Look at events. Look, I mean, it's supposed to be a hobby, like a cultural space that you're going to hang out in. You know, that yeah. probably wasn't the right word, but like a, uh, I don't know. I, I hope people get what I mean. Yeah, I got you, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Diddy, it is DTS 223. If you guys haven't listened to DTS the last month, you may not know. Next week, DTS 224 will be the final destiny of the show. We are wrapping up the program. If you want to hear about why we're retiring DTS and hanging up the microphone and headphones and walking away into the sunset, I believe we talked about it on into show 220. Forest. Into the Infinite Force. It was 220, right? Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you don't want to wait until next week, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it more Next week's show is going to be a little bit longer as it's going to be the final DTS. We're going to share some cool stories, stuff we've never talked about on the show before, and just extend our gratitude to you guys for an amazing four and a half years of Destiny podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's wild to me, Diddy. Like, just the support that has come out from listeners and the stories you guys have shared with Diddy and I the last three and a half weeks has been... Uh, I don't know the word like some surreal. of them moving surreal yeah. like almost got me emotional because it's like <laughs> you guys so are you saying we've listened to you for every single week for four years like on my drive to work or while I'm doing this or that and it's just it means a ton and I don't know how to phrase the appreciation in a eloquent way so just thanks you guys this was cool right yeah well you have a week to figure out how to say that so there you go yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, with that said, Diddy, where can people find your content? Twitter.com slash Diddy DTS, D I T T Y DTS, and YouTube.com slash Wooshness, W O O O S H N E S S. 
You can find all the links from today and more on our website, destinytheshow.com. You can join the conversation in our Discord, discord.me slash destinytheshow. And you can follow me on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, all that stuff, at BBK Dragoon. Thanks very much for listening. Have a great week, and we'll talk with you next time. Thank you.